standing right here, with uh, Trudy, you can stand here. Um, and then Kurt, Susan, you guys can you guys both stand next to her here. Peter can um, The white and the
glad we have the rooms. This is nice. Yeah. So there's, those are here too if you need them. You can use the blue. Okay. Yep. If, if that's okay. Oh, that's fine. Whatever you're comfortable with. Worst case scenario. I know, yeah, it's true. It's, I think the light is
congregation, welcome. We are so glad that you are here um, on this exciting morning. It's exciting for, uh, for several reasons, so uh, a few things as we uh, begin this morning. Um, we've got a lot uh, going on this morning, a lot of good, wonderful things. Uh, later on in the service, uh, we will be baptizing uh, Trudy Perillo, uh, which is exciting. Uh, it is awesome and a joyous occasion uh, and we're also going to be doing some recognition. This is, uh, happens to also be our uh, recognition Sunday, so we're going to be recognizing some folks, and we are going to be handing out some Bibles uh, to, uh, to some folks. And then after the service, uh, we have our annual church picnic, uh, which is the first one we've been able to have since uh, June of 2019. Um, so this is exciting. Uh, if you are here and you didn't know that there was a picnic, congratulations, your lunch plans are set. Uh, there is plenty of food and fellowship. Um, we've got uh, the, the SOS band is going to be playing some beautiful, wonderful, amazing music uh, during the picnic as well. So please, uh, please stay. Uh, those who are joining online, um, if you want to make your way down here after the service, please do that as, as well. Uh, so it is uh, indeed, today is indeed the day that the Lord has made. God's people are gathered, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Holy God, you call us in Jesus Christ to bear fruit. As we worship together this morning, may the work of your Spirit be so cultivated in our lives and in our life together. May we worship you in spirit and in truth, that we may be conformed more and more to your love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Assisting in worship this morning is Betty Conlon. Betty is one of our elders serving on session, uh, and Betty will now lead us in our call to worship. Good morning. Please join in the call to worship, which comes from Psalm 77, verses 11 through 15, responding with the bold print in your bulletin. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. Let us meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed your might among the peoples. With your strong arm, you redeemed your people. Please stand in body or in spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me, which is a bulletin insert. Oh 
In his letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul reminds us, for you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. The truth is, however, that we sometimes use our freedom in Christ for ourselves and not in love for the sake of others. Please join in the corporate prayer of confession printed in your bulletin or on your screen. This will be followed by a moment for silent personal confession. Let us pray. O oh God, Holy Trinity, help us to confess our sins. You give us a place in your creation and you intend that we live in love with all that you have made. We confess that we abuse what you give us by our thoughts, actions, and the meditations of our hearts. We show how enslaved we are and corrupt by sin. Far from walking in the spirit, we stumble on paths that lead to death. O fire of heaven, have mercy on us. Satisfy the longings of our souls by taking us up into your spirit that we may love our neighbor. Rekindle our desire to follow our Savior Jesus Christ, whose passion for obeying you leads us to inheritance, which is your promised kingdom. Now a time for silent confession. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Again in Galatians, for freedom Christ has set us free. Beloved of God, Christ breaks the power of sin and sets us free to love God and to love one another. Believe the good news that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. scripture this morning is from the letter to the Galatians chapter 5, verse 1 and verses 13 through 25. If you would like to follow along, this can be found in your pew Bibles on pages 190 and 191 in the New Testament. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us pray. Faithful God, how blessed are those who hunger for your righteous justice and thirst for your just righteousness. Let us recognize our hunger and thirst this morning. Sanctify us by your word and spirit, so that we may glorify you in the company of the faithful. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Reading from Galatians. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit, and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, 
Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. So as I uh, mentioned um, a few minutes ago, we've got a lot of uh, really good things coming up uh, in the service um, here in just a a few moments uh, from now. Really good things uh, that we don't get to do very often. Uh, We have a a lot packed in, a lot of good, beautiful, holy, and sacred things going on today. So it occurred to me uh, that this right here should be kind of short. Or at least shorter uh, than than normal. So uh, my promise to you uh, is that I'm going to try. I have my water in the mug that a kind person from this church gave me that says, help, I'm preaching and I can't shut up. So I'm going to try to keep it um, short. Because um, what we have coming up, uh, as I mentioned a couple weeks ago when we had Confirmation Sunday and we recognized um, our uh, middle and high school uh, students who were in the confirmation class this year and were making their public profession of faith and joining the church, and we recognized and celebrated them uh, on, on that day. What I mentioned um, that what was going on then, and the same applies right now, uh, that what is going on later in the service um, is uh, as much, if not more, of a sermon about. Uh, the goodness of God, the promises of God in Jesus Christ, the invitation into these promises and this calling and of, of God in this way of life following Jesus, they are being proclaimed and embodied in what's coming up in the service on into our time together, uh, celebrating around and fellowshipping and enjoying each other's company with food and beautiful music, um, and not just what I have to say here in these few minutes. And so that being said, we have this passage uh, from Galatians. We've been in this letter of Paul's uh, for, uh, for a couple, couple weeks. This is the second week. The lectionary has uh, guided us into uh, a few Sundays in this letter of, uh, of Paul's to this ancient church in the city of Galatia. Um, and some of this passage perhaps was a little familiar to you. You might have recognized that part about the fruit of the Spirit. Um, that's one of those verses that ends up crocheted on pillows and on wall, wall hangings and things like that. Um, and, and so today, uh, right now, I'm just going to offer uh, a few short things, I hope, um, uh, about this. There's a lot in here, uh, in this passage. There is a lot. There is a lot. But for this particular day, uh, we're going to keep it uh, short. This passage picks up uh, a little further on from where we were last week in, in Paul's, Paul's letter here to the Galatian church. Paul has been, if you remember, uh, well, quite honestly, Paul has been frustrated with this ancient church. Um, because rather than, than seeing and experiencing uh, the, the gospel, uh, the good news of Jesus as liberating not just for them, but for others too. They have, they have instead used the message of Jesus to bind people, to bind others, to even bind themselves to the things of, of what Paul calls the law. These particular outward signs, uh, cultural or ethnic or social, religious, maybe even political markers, binding people to, if you don't look quite like this, well then you can't really be a part of God's community. For them, in that ancient world, in the city of Galatia, which was a Roman colony, if you're a Gentile convert, you still, the argument was, well, you still need to be circumcised, or it doesn't count. That particular cultural, ethnic, and religious marker, um, and notice, notice then that, that this, is, this marker for, for what it meant to follow Christ would have been only uh, for men. Not that women weren't seen as members of the covenant, but if you're privileging a a, a sign of the covenant that excludes others, 
Well, you can see the issue that might begin to develop that is frustrating Paul as he's looking at this community. And for us, well, it could be any number of things. And it could be, well, if you don't vote this way, you can't really be a Christian. Or perhaps conflating cultural heritage or or social practices, national identity even, with what is or is not Christian, what it means to be a part of God's family. Or perhaps privileging a a theological heritage from from Western Europe. We're good Presbyterians here. That's our kind of geographic heritage. Um, But perhaps privileging that over and against Christian theologies and ways of understanding and seeing um, God's work in Jesus Christ and the call to follow Him that come to us from the black church experience in America or the church in Latin America or Africa or Asia. And all of this, Paul says, when we are doing this, when we are looking to those sorts of things, when we are turning, in Paul's words then, to a different gospel, one that just rebinds us to what he has been calling the law, which if you remember from last week was never the purpose of the law. And so Paul begins here in this passage for this morning, for freedom Christ has set us free. Not so that we could fall back to just being bound again, but it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. But then he offers us a word of caution. For you are called to be freed, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. And you can maybe almost see uh, the twinkle in Paul's eye as he says this, this beautiful, holy, and sacred irony of the gospel. It is for freedom that Christ has set you free. But beware, because using your freedom that you have in Christ to simply indulge yourself or to satisfy whatever it is that you happen to find yourself wanting or desiring, Paul goes on to say, that's not freedom. It might sound like it. We might think it is. Especially in our culture, right? Freedom for us really means I can do whatever I want. I'm free from those constraints. But Paul here is saying, that's just being enslaved again to yourself. Because the real question about freedom is not, what are you freed from? The ultimate question is not, what restraints are you freed from? No, the real question for Paul is, what have you been freed for? For what purpose? For what way of life have you been freed by Jesus? And so the irony of the gospel, of the way of Jesus, the beautiful, holy, and sacred irony of the story that God calls us into in the good news of Jesus Christ is this. You were called to freedom, but not so that we could use our freedom to just again be enslaved to ourselves, but through love become slaves, become bound to one another. You have been freed for something. The beautiful irony of the gospel is that freedom in Christ is found when we bind ourselves, not to ourself, but to one another in love. In fact, Paul goes on to say, the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You want to bind yourself to the law, Galatians? Calvin Presbyterian Church, Kevin, whoever it may be, you want to bind yourself to the law? Then bind yourself to loving your neighbor because that is what the law always was pointing to. This is the freedom for which Christ has set you free. And if the things that you are binding yourself to, let alone that you are trying to bind others to, is not leading to this, it is not bearing this kind of fruit, then you have not bound yourself to the gospel of Jesus Christ, but to a different one altogether. Because this is what freedom in Christ looks like. It looks like being bound 
to and for and in love for your neighbor. And that's where he gets into all this about what he, he calls the work of the flesh as opposed to the fruit of the Spirit. And what he means by flesh there is not simply another word for talking about what is, uh, what is earthy or material or flesh, like right, the physical. That's not, that's not what he means um, by flesh. He's not saying that that means that, that what we can see in the material stuff that we're made of and that we live and move and, and operate in. Um, he's not saying that that is by definition bad and that what is, what is spiritual or non-physical is by definition good. That's not Christianity. God created stuff. If you remember way back to the beginning, God created stuff. God created flesh. God created the material world and called it, do you remember what he called it? Good. And then even very good. And God, in fact, the Christian story is that God, in fact, entered into and joined himself to the physical world he had created. The incarnation, Jesus, the word became what? Flesh. So Paul is not saying anything that's, that's earthy or flesh is, is inherently evil or bad. Rather, what he is doing is talking about what drives, what orients, what, what feeds, what motivates, what sort of life our life lived in this very world that God created, what is animating it, and what is therefore the type of life that is the result of it. He's not talking about, um, he's talking about a, a quality of life here. And in fact, one thing when you look at what he calls the works of the flesh and the the fruit of the Spirit, when you look at what these have in common, both of these lists, the works of the flesh and the fruit of the Spirit, is that they are not so much abstract values. Right? You look back at them. They're They're not so much abstract values and attitudes that just kind of exist in a vacuum. But rather, they are particular ways of orienting to, responding to, acting in and through a very real flesh and blood world in relationship to very real flesh and blood people. Either relationships that are turned inward on yourself and so using other people or relationships turned outward towards others and so loving your neighbor. Love is only possible in relationship. Joy and peace are only joy and peace if they occur within particular context. Patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, generosity, and self-control. These are not abstract ideas or even ideals floating around. They are particular ways, particular orientations to. They can only be expressed and, pardon the pun, come to fruition They can only be nourished within a world filled with times and places and circumstances and people to give love and patience and faithfulness to and and to receive love and patience and, and faithfulness and kindness from. To be generous and gentle with and to receive generosity and gentleness from. And there is no such thing as self control absent or outside living within the particulars of times and places and circumstances and in a community of one kind or another with others. When I'm at home by myself and nothing else is going on and there's no circumstances or anything tempting me, I am the most self-controlled person in the world. But you end up in a circumstance, something in life happening or just in relation with other people and suddenly self-control becomes a bigger and actual thing. And so when you read what constitutes the fruit of the Spirit here, what we see is that this this kind of life can only come about, these things can only come about, they can only be nurtured, they can only grow, they can only be born out really and truly when we are living in community with the world and with others, when we have bound ourselves to one another and to our neighbors in love. And so Paul is saying, after saying that the entire law is summed up in this, the commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. This is what we are freed for. 
What he's saying here is, and this is what it looks like. It looks like this. It is loving. It, it seeks the joy and peace of others. It shows patience and kindness. It is generous. Not just with money. Sometimes that's the easy way to be generous. But also in terms of, of, of how we interact with our attitudes toward, toward, your, toward our neighbor. Right? Generosity, for example, might not might be not assuming the worst of your neighbor. (laughs) Having a generous attitude and spirit with them, right? But rather, rather maybe begin by assuming the best of your neighbor, even in disagreement, that they too, just like you, are trying to do the best they can in a world that is often messy and complicated and tricky. Loving your neighbor looks like being faithful, not just to God, but, but being faithful to them. And to showing yourself to be trustworthy. That's the the word there for faith. And the Bible is also the word for trust. To show yourself to be trustworthy to them. That they can trust you with who they are. Loving your neighbor as yourself looks like showing gentleness with them. And with yourself. And all of this, no doubt, takes some self-control. To be free in Christ, for Paul here. To be free in Christ, to not be under anything other than the grace of Christ. Because that's been his, his, throughout this letter leading up to this, that's been the thread. That we are only, we are under the grace of Christ. And so to be free in Christ in this way is to be free for this kind of life. For being free to live in this way. Freed to have this kind of of quality of life cultivated and nurtured, not just in your own individual life, but in the community in which you find yourself. And so here is the scandalous thing about what Paul says here. He does not say, the fruit of the Spirit is being right about X, Y, and Z, theologically, culturally, or otherwise. Truth is important. Paul's not going to say otherwise. But notice he's not saying the fruit of the Spirit is to be right. He says the fruit of the Spirit is living and nurturing this sort of life. A life that bears this kind of fruit, he says. This kind of life. That is what frees you. Frees me. Frees us to be captive to love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control for one another and for our neighbor. Living like that for and with and to your neighbor. That's what Paul says freedom. Not just any old tired kind of freedom. But true, vibrant, captivating, life-changing, world-altering freedom in Christ looks like. Things are tough. I don't know if you've watched the news recently. There are a a lot of difficult things going on. There are a lot of uh, not unimportant issues and a lot of not unimportant, um, certainly a lot of valid issues fears and worries that are manifesting in our culture, in our society, in our nation, in our communities. I don't know what the future holds for us, for our nation, for the church. I don't know. But here's what I do know. Come what may, Christ has set us free for this. To love our neighbor. Full stop whoever they may be, as ourself. And to bear this kind of fruit and not those kinds of works. To bear this kind of fruit. Not to necessarily or ultimately win arguments or political victories or or culture wars, but it is to bear this kind of fruit in and among and with our neighbor. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, 
Or we might also translate that trustworthiness, gentleness, and self-control. For we were called to freedom, siblings, one and all. We were called to freedom, only let us not use our freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love, bind ourselves to one another. For this is the whole law summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So let us therefore live by the Spirit. The fruit of which, again, we can't say it too many times, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That is what we have been set free in Christ for. And so, beloved, may it be so. And may we be so guided. Come what may. And in whatever circumstances in which we find ourselves, guided by the Spirit, that we may bear this fruit. May it be so. May it be so. Amen. I invite you now uh, to stand and sing uh, hymn number 492 in the blue hymn books in the, uh, the back of each pew, uh, hymn number 492, Baptized in Water. It is, um, it is our joy now uh, to invite uh, forward um, Trudy Perillo uh, to come forward uh, and uh, standing with her as her sponsors um, are her, her uncle uh, Kurt and uh, Kurt Fishbach and her aunt Susan Fishbach. So I'm going to invite uh, Trudy and Kurt and, um, and Susan to come forward and Peter Cameron coming forward. Um, representing, uh, the, as our clerk of session, uh, representing the session. Um, this is a joyful occasion. <laughs> I love it. Um, Trudy, we rejoice uh, that you now desire to publicly declare your faith, uh, to be baptized, and to be received into the membership of this congregation, uh, and, then, and to so, sh- so share in this common ministry. Baptisms are signs and seals of God's promise that we are washed and cleansed by Christ, that we die with Christ, and that we are raised with Christ. They are signs and seals of being part of the covenant community of God. And when we baptize infants, as we often do here, uh, we we proclaim that God claims people in love and grace even before they have any clue what's going on. And when we baptize adults, 
They were not baptized as an infant or child when we baptized them. We are witnessing to the truth that God's gift of grace calls for our grateful response. These are two aspects of the same promise of God in this one sacrament. And so I invite you to hear these words from Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Peter? On behalf of the session, I present Gertrude Ann Perillo, who has been received into the membership of this congregation by profession of faith to now receive the sacrament of baptism. I have some questions for you, and for some of you. <laughs> Trudy, do you now desire to be baptized? If so, please say, I do. And to Kurt and Susan, who stand here as her sponsors, as you stand here today with Trudy, do you promise through prayer and example to support and encourage her to be a faithful Christian? If so, please say, we do. We do. And now to the congregation. Do you, as members of this Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Trudy by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging her to know and follow Christ, and to be encouraged by her for the same, as together we all seek to be faithful members of Christ Church? If so, please say we do. We do. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Trudy, as you profess your faith and prepare to be baptized, you are affirming the covenant God has established and called you into through Jesus Christ. Within this covenant, God gives us new life, guards us from evil, and nurtures us in love. In embracing this covenant, we choose whom we will serve, and turning from evil, we turn to Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to ask you now a few questions to re about... Um, asking you to reject sin, to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, and to confess the faith of the church and the faith in which you are about to be baptized. So please answer the following questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, please say, I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, please say, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple and member of, member of his church, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I will with God's help. And now, with the whole church, I invite us to confess our faith together, the faith that calls us and binds us together as God's people, by all of us together answering the following questions, guided by the faith of the church expressed in the Apostles' Creed. Church, do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trudy, you have publicly professed your faith. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation? Share in its worship and ministry through your prayers, gifts, study, and service, and so fulfill your calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ. If so, please say, I will with God's help. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all living things through the gift of water. In the beginning of time, 
Your spirit moved over the water, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, you destroyed evil by the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea and into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. And so we thank you, O God, for the water of baptism, a sign and a seal of our being buried with Christ in his death, sharing in his resurrection, and the promise that we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so send your spirit to move over this water, that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it, that Trudy may know that you raise her to new life and that she is grafted to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon her, that she may have power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory now and forever. Amen. Ready? <laughs> Gertrude Ann, Trudy, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> o Lord, uphold Trudy by your Holy Spirit. Nurture and cultivate in her the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, the very fruit of your Spirit, against which there is no law, that she may indeed fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. <laughs> Trudy, you have now been received into the one holy Catholic and apostolic church through baptism. God has made you a member of this household of God to share with us in the priesthood of Christ. And so let us welcome and share the peace of Christ with Trudy and now with one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please take a moment to welcome Trudy and to greet one another with the peace of Christ. stand and greet one another as well. Find your way back to your seats. Uh, you may be seated. Here again from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we share our gifts, we help to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit, not just in us, but in the world. Please take a moment to consider the gifts of time, talent, or resources we have received, and how they can be nurtured and cultivated in generosity. If giving to the ministry of this church is a way for you to respond to God in this way, there is an offering plate by the door as you leave after the service and online giving cards are in the pews for use for those who give online. 
Those worshiping at home can use the online giving option on our website or mail your offerings into the church office. In all the ways we are called, let us give as those for whom faith has come and now called children of God. Generous God, we give you thanks for all of your blessings to us. And use these gifts that we offer, gifts of our time, of our talent, and of our resources, as a sign of your great love for the world, so that all may know and share in the abundance of your grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. There are uh, a number of, uh, of announcements in your bulletin. There's a, uh, the weekly bulletin announcement. There's a lot going on in the life of the church. Um, so I invite you to be sure to take some time in the next day or two to look that over. Uh, those who are worshiping uh, online at home, you can find a link on our website to all of this week's announcements. Um, uh, I do want to just, uh, just highlight one thing. Uh, and that is that uh, over the next couple weeks, uh, I'm going to be away uh, on vacation. Uh, so if there are any pastoral needs, we have our, our deacons and there's some uh, other pastors in the area for, for most of the time I'm away that have uh, volunteered to be available should, uh, should any pastoral emergencies um, arise. Next Sunday, uh, the Reverend Art Wolvert Wolverton, Wolverton um, who is a, a retired minister uh, living in, the bound, in our presbytery, a uh, member of our presbytery, and he's a, a retired minister. Um, he'll be here uh, preaching and presiding over the Lord's Supper um, that will be celebrated next Sunday. And then the, the following Sunday, um, Nicole uh, Aronson Champagne, Nicole uh, will be here um, preaching. Uh, Nicole is an elder at uh, Westminster Presbyterian Church, which is a, a church also in our presbytery in, uh, in Connecticut. Uh, Nicole, I've gotten to know over the past month or so, she had been serving as uh, the uh, vice moderator of our presbytery last year, uh, and she moved into the moderator role this year, uh, and uh, I, they moved me into the vice moderator role. So <laughs> uh, I did agree to it, um, but I've been able to, to beginning to work with her uh, and get to know her um, uh, through work with the Presbytery just this, pa this past month. So uh, she is excited to, to be here with you all um, in, in two Sundays. Um, so just, just things to, to make note of. Again, there's a lot of announcements, so uh, please be sure to, to look those over. Um, and now it is uh, another wonderful, uh, joyous time uh, that we are celebrating. This is our Recognition um, Sunday. And we, uh, it is our practice uh, each year to, um, to recognize um, people who, uh, good, great achievements, to recognize um, graduates and people who have uh, given um, of their time and energy and imagination and all sorts of things to the ministry of this church. Um, it is also um, traditionally the time when we present our second graders uh, with Bibles. Um, and we haven't done it, been able to do it in a couple years again because the pandemic kind of limited how we were moving and who was available in, uh, to come in person. Um, so we are going to uh, be presenting our, our second graders and uh, elementary school uh, ages that are a little older than second grade. Um, so I'm going to ask um, Dave Pack, Dave, is, you're back there. Uh, and Anna Cameron to come forward and help, help me here. Uh, Dave and Anna have been the, uh, the Sunday school teacher this past year uh, for our elementary school aged. What do you guys want to be? Come over here. And so they're going to um, help. Not everybody could be here, um, but I'm going to invite, let's see, Evan is here. Evan, come on up. And Lorraine is not in town. Uh, you can go, Evan, go over there. You know those people. Um, uh, Lorraine Pack and uh, Jeremy Ross 
um, are receiving Bibles, but they neither uh, were able to be here uh, today. And then we have uh, Kinley and Tristan Thompson to come, come up. We have Bibles, Bibles for you. Come on up. <laughs> ah, yes. So, um, Anna and Dave, if you wouldn't mind get, uh, presenting their Bibles to them, and then we'll, uh, we'll have a prayer together. This is a reminder uh, to all of us um, that the story that God has been writing in the world since the beginning, the story that God continues to write, and the story that God promises to write uh, for all of us, calling us into God's story of love and faith and joy and peace and gentleness and all those things that we talked about earlier, that you are a part of that story. And God calls you just as he calls all of us. Uh, into that story. So uh, I'm going to pray here for us and that, that these, uh, these Bibles, that God's Word would be a guiding light uh, for you um, as you continue to grow, uh, not just to grow taller and older, but to grow in faith um, as we all do. So let's pray. Lord, we thank you uh, for Evan and for Kenley and for Tristan and for Lorraine and for Jeremy. We thank you uh, that your love um, calls them and fills them. May your word be a guiding light to them all the days of their life, that, that they may grow in faith and that they may continue to help us grow in love and faith. Lord, we are grateful uh, for your church, and we are reminded uh, that, the, that the youth, the young, the children are not just the church of tomorrow, uh, but they are indeed the church of today, right now and right here. For this we are grateful, Lord. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. You can go back to your seats. And then, Dave, thank you. We also uh, want to recognize those um, in, our, in our midst and in our congregation that have graduated. Um, and uh, so we, uh, we have two college graduates, Abby Gorvette, um, who uh, lives far in a faraway land of Illinois, um, uh, is not able to be here, but she graduated from Illinois State University um, with a degree in elementary education, and I know she is preparing to begin a, uh, her first job as a second and third grade teacher uh, beginning this fall. Uh, so, Abby, if you're watching, hello, congratulations. We celebrate with you, and you are in our prayers as you begin this next part of your adventure. Uh, and then Kayla Ciampanelli, who is here, so I'm going to have her stand up. Uh, Kayla just graduated from Providence College um, as a, a finance major and a minor in accounting. So any math questions or money questions, you know how to, um, who, to who to ask. And she's going to be beginning a master's program this summer um, and uh, will also begin as an accountant. Uh, so Kayla, congratulations and welcome to this next chapter. You can clap for them. That's an accomplishment. Um, also, we want to recognize um, those who have uh, led and guided and just made things work here at Calvin and all the, the ministries um, that, that go on. Uh, so as I say your name, I'm going to ask you to be bold and stand up. Um, we have our uh, small group leaders, those who have uh, led Bible studies and small groups this past Past year, Melissa Gorvet, who I know is on vacation, I think probably with Abby, um, and D.A. Silbert, one of our small group leaders. And then um, you can stay, st stay standing. Me, I'm already standing. Um, uh, and then, um, especially in these past couple years when we have had to really up our AV game, uh, we began live streaming that we continue to do so, and we continue to fine tune that because we know that is. Uh, uh, an important ministry, um, not just in the times of COVID, um, but in, in general, we have uh, people that tune in um, each Sunday, just because they're not otherwise able to be connected here in person, and so it means a lot. Um, so uh, those who help make the, the audio, video, the live stream, and everything, uh, Josh Cameron, and Peter Cameron, and Brad Cruzan, and Paul Kunis, and Dave Pack, and Ezra White, uh, and Christian Kunis. Um, yes, um, who have uh, kept all the, the sound and audio and video going out 
um, for, for folks in that ministry. So we thank you uh, for the time that you have put in. And then uh, each Sunday we have pulpit assistants who assist in leading worship. Anna Cameron, thank you. Jennifer Cameron, Peter Cameron, Debbie Carroll, Betty Conlon, Jackie Eckhart, Lily Coney, Brad Cruzan, Dave Pack, and Linda Tent, uh, and then Marsha Weiss, who organizes and herds the cats um, to make sure that this works. Thank you uh, for making sure that Sunday mornings um, are a part where we all are able to gather and lead in, in worship. Um, and then each Sunday, we have uh, volunteers uh, who help greet, I don't have the list, but who greet members and take uh, take attendance and organize uh, the communion, serve communion, setting up for coffee uh, fellowship, fellowship time. If you have helped out with anything like that, I invite you to please stand up. I know more of you help out with things like that. Yes, yeah. So uh, this, is a, this is a good reminder. Um, just take a look around that uh, this is the church at work. Um, we are in this together. If I was not here, if I'd suddenly disappeared and there was no pastor, things would be different, but church would still happen. If you all disappeared, any of you who are sitting here or standing here, there would be no church. Um, so this is a reminder, again, of the community that God calls uh, for us to love and serve one another. So thank you. You deserve a, more than a round of applause, but we'll give those to you. And I have been told that there is one final recognition. Yes. So I come with two disclaimers. One is I wrote everything down so I wouldn't mumble. And two, forgive my timeline. Um, I wanted to squeeze it into at least one page, but I didn't want to go on to 10 pages. So um, let me start by saying that thank you are the two simplest words you can give or receive. So over two and a half years ago, when the world shut down in the midst of a global pandemic, churches had to come up with a new game plan and worshiping God went in a new direction. Creating a full service on a little screen became the new norm. But continuing the musical portion of the service could have been a challenge, but not for Derek. So like Phantom of the Opera, he went into his home studio, and with today's technology, he started to play and record music. He sang lead vocals, harmonies, and backup. Putting it all together, he created music that would sound like a full group on a Sunday morning. This continued over the next few months as we made it through the winter and early spring. As things started to look a little better, we were able to worship outside. A piano was dragged out onto the front lawn, where he competed with motorcycles, fire trucks, general traffic, and of course, those annoying little black bugs. But the music played on. As we headed into the fall and the Christmas season, we were allowed to be back inside with separate pews, masks, and even a reservation. But the music continued. With the help of Zoom and email, Derek recorded music, sent out video files and sheet music, and with the help from Paul on the technical side of it, putting it all together, one by one, like the beginning of the Brady Bunch, we popped up on the screen, and just like that, we had a full choir. As things started to open up more, he worked effortlessly with those of us who wanted to do solos. He would rework music, harmonize, sing duets, rehearsing early on Sunday mornings only to bring out the best in each and every one of us. Slowly, we returned to rehearsals. Although small in numbers, we were all just happy to be singing together again. And just like that, after two and a half years, the choir was back. Easter brought back the sound of the bells, and of course, a few weeks ago, we even had a children's choir. Two and a half years, and thankfully, the music never ended. In Psalm 100, verses 1 and 2, it reads, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And so we did. So on this Recognition Sunday, on behalf of the choir, and of course the whole congregation, we would like to say to you, Derek, we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank you.
<laughs> I don't know. I was waiting to I was waiting to see if you were. Yeah. Um I really didn't like being outside. But I yeah, I just um I thought this was my job. Like this is what we do, right? We we That's why it was so fun. <laughs> you know what they say, nobody goes home humming the sermon. music and arranging it, that was so much fun. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, this is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. We'll take the pressure off of you now. We'll Thank come you. <laughs> um, it, is, it is now time for us to, uh, to go to the Lord as God's people in prayer uh, for, um, for one another, for our communities, for the world, and for the church. Uh, so let us, um, let us do just that. Let us pray. Holy God, one in three, three in one, hear us as we pray for your blessing. We pray for the church. Lord, help us to follow you, guided by your Spirit. Revive our faith as we seek you in this place. Show us how to proclaim your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for all those in this place, in our particular congregation, that love and serve you and your church and the people. From Sunday school and Bible study leaders to, to those who gather others for fellowship and community, for those who do the behind-the-scenes work that is only ever noticed if someone is not doing it. For the young ones here, may they delight in your word. For all who love and serve you, love and serve the people with faithfulness, grace, and hope. Holy, triune God, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Bring peace and restoration to all in need. Deliver us from malice and temptation. Set us free to share your Spirit's gifts. We pray for our nation and our, our, our society, Lord. And sometimes perhaps we don't even know what to pray, and so we trust your Spirit at work interceding on our behalf. And we offer that to you as our prayers. We pray for this community. Open the doors of this place. Let strangers find welcome here and make us ready to meet Christ in them. We pray especially for the family in Cumberland, devastated by violence and suicide this past week, and especially the children that were left orphaned, classmates of some that we know well here. Holy triune God, hear our prayer. We pray for loved ones. You know the struggles and concerns of all. Lord, take away fear, pain, and doubt, for you are the God who works wonders. We lift up to you our church family. Lord, continue to be with Barbara and Lydia, Jackie and Linda, Elaine and Matt, Miriam, Dot, Fran, and Linda. And we lift up to you our, our family and friends, Debbie's friend Diane and her friend Carol's son Kevin, Judy's brother and Miriam's sister, Terry's daughter-in-law. We lift up Jared, Jennifer's mother, and DA's nephew. And now, in this moment of silence, Lord, hear the prayers, the joys, and the concerns that rest on and perhaps even wrestle with our hearts. Lord, hear these silent prayers that each of us brings.
And we pray especially this week, Lord, for the friends and family of Valerie Large. We grieve and mourn, Lord, for she was such a dear friend, our co-worker in the ministry of this church. Lord, she could have stood at each category of, of people we, that were recognized and so much more. And she was our dear sister. She is our dear sister in Christ. And so we pray for those who are mourning her death this week. And we are also grateful for your promise to her and to us, for your faithfulness and love to her and to us. It is stronger and more eternal than even death. And so we hope and trust. We find hope and comfort and peace in the promise of the resurrection. All this we ask of you, Lord God, in all things. May the fruit of your Spirit be nurtured, cultivated, and above all, evident in our lives and in our life together. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, in whom we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn uh, is, There is a Place of Quiet Rest, which can be found as an insert. And I also remembered, I forgot to recognize the Sunday school teachers, I think, right? Did I? Jennifer and uh, Jennifer Cameron and um, Roberta Pandolfi, did we, who especially our confirmation, um, confirmation leaders. Now, oh, you deserve to be recognized. <laughs> Let us stand and sing, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. receive the benediction. Lord, bless the food we are about to receive, that it may nourish our bodies for your service, and bless our fellowship together, that it may nourish our souls for your service. And the joy of celebrating and enjoying the beauty of music and fellowship, that it may help us delight in the good gifts of your creation, and so delight in you. Amen. The words of the prophet Isaiah. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. 
the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus the, Jesus the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.